Hey, Pips, this is Coach Bill. Remember, the Pip is the perpetually improving player. Hey, this is Coach Bill coming at you today here. We're talking about understanding pitching instruction and other man-made disasters. So this is our overview uh, from when we uh, get into our our pitching here. So today's just our, an overview. We want to talk a little bit about what's going on and, uh, you know, just, just what is the lay of the land. So uh, I have a little slide here somewhere along the line that I created for a, for a challenge uh, a, a little bit ago. But, you know, what do the Titanic, uh, Three Mile Island, and pitching instruction all have in common? Well, they're all man-made disasters. Okay, so here's what we want to talk about. Man-made reason number one. Okay, being trained to overthink mechanics. Okay, very much... Uh, a command type of instruction, get to this position, uh, pull the ball out of the glove this way, pause at the top. All of these commands that when uh, spoken to, uh, from an individual coach, father, mother, whatever, to a player, there's something lost in the translation. And uh, as, a, as an instructor, as a coach, we want to be able to give external instructions and have the player uh, incorporate those, internalize those, so that he can create his own commands. So we're talking about command versus feel, uh, depending on where you go, how you do. You know, we have a lot of, uh, we get on to, to YouTube, and right now, you know, we're just at the dawn of, uh, of, of the YouTube phenomenon. And there's a lot of crud that goes out there. Anybody can just take a video camera, throw it up, and this is, you know, what I've done, and this is what we do, and this is how it's done. And, we you know, we stop videos, and we look at them, and they're like photographs, and everything is like from point to point. Well, as uh, a mentor of mine once said, the movement is between the points. Pitching is between the points. Photographs are great. Make fat heads out of them, stick them on your wall. Okay, what we're trying to do is to have awareness of movement. We're trying to have feel. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, the pitching math amounts to this. A fast mind equals a slow arm. If we're making a player run through his mind how his mechanics are, what he's doing, and, you know, and I don't even know what mechanics means, you know, uh, but we're going to shout that at our guy in the middle of a game, well, his focus is now being removed from, from throwing the baseball to trying to figure out how he's throwing the baseball. And I don't think that's conducive for a good outing. So, you know, fast minds equal slow arms. We're, we're overthinking situations. So what we're trying to do is to move away from that idea of command understand flow okay and again we go back to what Bernstein said Bernstein said that when you tell yourself exactly what you want that the body will align itself to provide for that task however Bernstein did not say that the body will align itself in its most efficient manner okay so we want to have that idea and hopefully about just a little bit later here we'll get into some of the some of the first causes that that we're going to start looking at okay so man-made reason number two we get kids in the uh, in the off season. Uh, we start to train a little bit, and the whole idea that arm strength uh, versus arm speed. And look, hey, if if arm strength was the deal, then every power lifter and every National Football League lineman or linebacker should be able to throw uh, ninety five. And we know that's just not true. Okay, so you know, so what happens? You know, when we get into like a run and gun situation, because that's some of the big drills that that people like to do. Well, in and of themselves, uh, is the run and gun a bad thing? No, it can be used as a as a measuring tool when we're trying to find uh, leaks uh, and such. But basically, what the run and gun does is it just builds up a momentum throw and. Um, you know, it rushes the body a little bit, which might force it into into compliance with how it wants to unfold. But the run and gun in and of itself is something that 
that I'm really not interested in as a training device. Okay, so there's an idea that Lance Wheeler talks about in his work, an idea of called peer pressure and how everything affects everything. And uh, so a lot of times, you know, we're so engrossed with what is happening at the top end, what is happening at the end of our fingers, uh, that we sort of forget the whole foundation of everything else. And that typically begins with what's happening down below and where we want to start. So, so you know, man-made disaster number two, training arm strength over arm speed. And if we start to put strength on top of a bad foundation, we're probably headed in for a little uh, bit of a nightmare. And then uh, man-made reason number three is when we don't have uh, command. And there's a difference between control and command. Control is the ability to throw the ball over the plate. Command is the ability to put the ball in a particular position on the plate. And we'll get much more into detail on this when we start looking at effective velocity. But none, nonetheless, if my arm is off, and look, from throw to throw, it's going to be off a little bit. I'm never going to be able to repeat my throw. Maybe throw number one and throw number 722 are very, very, very similar. But from throw to throw, it's going to be off a little bit. And, and quite frankly, it's a testament to how athletic uh, players are. The fact that that they do that well when they're throwing. But if my arm's off an eighth of an inch at the very beginning, over a 60-foot span... I'm going to be off eight inches. So that's the difference of me missing on the inside corner and letting a ball hang out over the plate. If I'm off just a quarter of an inch at the very beginning, which can happen if I am thinking arm over core rotation, if I'm thinking arm speed, I might be off as much as 16 inches. And now we've got all sorts of problems. Remember, the plate's only 17 inches wide. So more of the same isn't the issue. More of, you know, just just keep working on it and, and, and we're going to find it. Uh, not really. We have to have a, a focused intent, an understanding of where we're trying to get to, and an understanding of, of, of how I'm, I'm feeling with that. And some people have gone to the point where there are connection balls and such. If you're going to use the connection ball, I'm not using it to train. What I'm trying to, to use it with is, um, is again, to create awareness and, and where's the issue. And am I leaving early and the ball falls out and it's heading in the wrong direction or such. But I don't want to artificially create this arm slot for people. And if I come back to understanding, if I move my middle well, then I'm okay with, with that rotation. So in and of itself, no problem uh, with the with like a connection ball. But at the same time, that's not going to correct the, 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 the issue uh, it's just going to show the symptom, okay? So uh, those are things that we want to get into, and what does that actually mean, and, and so on and so forth. So so what I did was uh, I just went back to the old days of uh, Set Pro, and, 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 and uh, Paul Nyman, who's just an absolute resource that you want to, um, you want to be a part of here uh, with, uh, with such... Um, I'm trying to find my, there we go. I'm trying to find my pointer here. So when we start to look at some items here, um, notice that we're not getting triple extension off this back leg, which means the ankle would be straight, the knee would be straight, and we would have this type of, you just followed my cursor, just this type of, of motion. Notice there's a sitting sitting into the glute, which allows the hip to rotate. Okay, so that's one of the areas that, that we start to look at. How, how can we process that? How do we do that? We look at the stabilization of this back foot. Okay, uh, notice as we go back through here again, notice how the lead foot, how the heel is leading the way, how it's being driven off this backside. Notice the position of the brake. Um, notice head position, notice shoulder position on all of these, okay? Uh, so this is flipped into the hip slide here, and we're looking at how hips rotate rather than getting pushed over the top, uh, which a triple extension off that backside would do, okay? So again, 
these are the types of issues that we're heading to. Again, thank you to Paul Nyman for his graphics. And this goes way back into his set pro days, which were very, uh, very instructive and very informational. So, and that site is still there. But, you know, we've got equal and opposite. We've got strong front side, but we've got this wonderful rotation right here of the hip rather than pushing over the top. Okay, so those are the, the items that we're starting to look at. Uh, that was a quick, brief overview. And let's just get back. Let's see where we're going here. Uh, I'll just pull back here. But anyhow, that's a quick, brief overview for today. Uh, that's our 10-minute section. Tomorrow, when we get into it, we're going to start looking at the... Uh, we'll start looking at the uh, feet, the legs, and we'll talk a little bit more about... Uh, about how we go about diagnosing our leaks. Okay, so that's where we're headed. Uh, just wanted to get back, uh, just give this quick overview for this for today. Hey, thanks for uh, watching. We'll be right back here tomorrow. A little more in depth with it, but just understand these are the things that I want to be. I want to kick around a little bit today. What am I hearing? What am I seeing? What am I being told? How am I processing those? How am I processing that information? Okay, that's where we're at. Kick that around a little bit. Jot some of your own notes down. We'll come back tomorrow. Put some notes. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to comment and ask questions. Uh, we'll get to them. And uh, tomorrow we'll, we're going to get underway uh, right back into pitching. Okay, talk to you soon.